I'm Julie Weisenhorn. I'm an extension educator in horticulture with the University of Minnesota. And we are out at the fantastic Minnesota Landscape Arboretum. And I am here to give you a little tour of the Pollinators for Food study. So come on in. This is the pollinator for food study. So the question is, when you have a plant like a pepper plant that is essentially wind pollinated, in other words, it doesn't really need insects for pollination, but if you plant pollinator friendly flowers next to it, will you have bigger, better, and more fruit? In other words, will your peppers be beefier? Will they be longer and larger? And will they have more seed set, which is a great indication of sufficient pollination. So here we have three different flowers. Over here we have the Melampodium show star, or butter daisy. We have one of the Cosmos, and this one happens to be called double click. And then we also have orange fudge rudbeckia, which to me sounds delicious. <laughs> and these all came from a study, another study that I'm doing called Flowers for Pollinators, where we're looking at 30 different varieties of annual flowers, trying to answer that question, are annuals attractive to pollinators? All three of these flowers showed seasonal bloom from late June through the end of August to early September, and they all showed some attraction, some level of attraction to honeybees and native bees, including bumblebees. So here we have 36 pepper plants. 18 of them are wide open to pollination. Any insect could reach them. Here we have 18 that are in an inclusion and they are excluded from pollination. In other words, insects are not reaching these plants. So what we ultimately want to find out is which group of peppers produces bigger, better, and more fruit. So here's how we're doing this study, how we're assessing these peppers. We're looking for peppers as they start to ripen, whether they turn an orange or a red color. That to us indicates that they have reached their mature size, their mature weight, and their mature seed number. So in this case, for example, we would choose this pepper off of this plant. It's clearly reached, it's uh, started to ripen and reach its mature size. So we would pick all the peppers in each of these two sectors, the open area and the excluded area, take them back to our offices, weigh the total weight, count the number of peppers we collected, measure each one and come up with an average size, and then we would cut them open and weigh the total seed weight for that area and keep a record of this because those are all indications, the size of the fruit, the weight, and the number of seeds as to how well it was pollinated. There's also some native bees here as well. Two of them on the same flower. This one is, I'm not sure which one this is. I've got to brush up on my bees a little bit more, but this has got, uh, you can definitely see the pollen on its legs. It's going to town on the orange fudge rudbeckia. This is one of my favorite plants. I just think the variation in the petal color is so cool. So that's our Pollinators for Food study. If you'd like more information about that, go to extension.umn.edu and visit our Yard and Garden News blog.